uh, creating a product ad, one, two, three, four, number five, creating a product, it's you, like when I say creating a product, I'm talking about creating a digital product, if you can, um, because everybody has something that they can do and do well. Um, and it's all about getting creative with your approach to it. So what is it that you know that you have either a passion or an interest about and something a lot of knowledge about and something that you can share with somebody and you can put that into an information product. And this is even more so, this has been highlighted again since COVID happened because there are so many people that are looking for digital answers to questions that they have or digital ways to solve problems that they have and that's where the money is. If you can solve somebody's problem or you can address somebody's pain point, then you are on to a, a winning possibility. So creating a product, um, it's, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it can and it cannot be, uh, it can and it can't be something that is difficult. Um, the more you know about something or the more passionate that you are about something, the easier that it should be. Especially if it, as I said before, solves a problem. Um, and then what comes in the wake of that is once you have your product is having the skills to market it or knowing someone that can market it for you and getting your product in front of the right eyes. Um, something else that we'll go, uh, go to in another video later. Um, that is another, like that's a massive rabbit hole that one. We, we could spend months on that one. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, I have to, to at this point, um, apologize in advance. Sometimes I get a bit carried away and I'm probably gonna be using some profanity from time to time. Um, if I get lost in my uh, train of thought and I forget where I am and I start to use profanity, please, I'm very, very sorry if you're watching this with children. Um, so yeah, just maybe keep that in mind. Uh, so e-commerce. E-commerce is basically the distribution of goods um, via the internet. And it's, I, th I think it's one of the most common sorts of ways that people would look for um, an alternative way to make, to make money, to make a living um, or a side hustle. Um, and yeah, so like from e-commerce, uh, like in under that, there are a bunch of sub niches as well, or niches. Um, one of them is drop shipping. That's not a new, that's, that's not a new process. Um, there's also another one called, uh, you, you're all familiar with eBay and uh, Amazon. Amazon has this program called FBA, which is Fulfillment by Amazon. And all that is, is you know, bulk buying a bunch of stock, sending it to the continent in which you want to sell. And then someone goes to Amazon. If they are looking for a product like yours, they place an, and, and they want your product in particular, they will purchase your order. And then from the warehouse closest to where it is that they are buying from, will get shipped to their address. And then you pay your fees out of that. However, however that side of things works. Um, and then if you do it right, you make a profit. Pretty cool. Uh, another one that we will get into down the track because I have done FBA myself as well as drop shipping. Um, another one that springs to mind under the e-commerce banner is um, what they call retail arbitrage. And basically, this is a little bit more um, like it, it takes a little bit more time to do this one because you have to have the time to sit in front of the computer, go to a various a uh, variety of different websites, e-commerce e sites, such as Amazon, um, or the Disney store, and you see what is selling at the moment, and then you go and look for other places where you might be able to pick the same product up for cheaper, say Walmart or even Disney again, um, and then you sell it on these other prop, uh, platforms, and then if there's a difference, if you can sell it, if you can buy it lower from Walmart, and then you can sell it higher on Amazon, then you it's like you you pocket the difference um it's just it, that's business in general you buying low and selling high um so if, if you can do that then by all means 
that can be really cool as well. Um, and then, so that was what, number six? Uh, we're at number seven now, which is teaching. So one that comes to mind when it comes to teaching is guitar. So for myself and my son, uh, my oldest boy and my middle son, um, they're both into playing instruments. And we go to YouTube all the time and we start looking for um, tutorials on how to play the songs that we like on guitar and how to, how to play the drums. Um, and that's really cool. Like YouTube is fantastic, but for that side of things, it's free, which is great for making a following, which is also something that we'll get into next. Um, but teaching, like there's platforms out there like Teachable, uh, another one's called Kajabi, um, places where you can go and you can upload your tutorials and you can charge people a membership or like pay the price to, or pay, pay a predetermined price to do, um, to learn how to, you know, pick up a skill like guitar or drums or something like that. That's also really cool. Um, pretty self-explanatory, but if you have a skill like that and you can teach someone and you have it, again, you have a passion for it, you really, really enjoy doing it, teaching would be great. Um, so that brings us to number eight, which is YouTube AdSense. And what that basically is, is touching on what we just done before uh, with the guitar lessons, that kind of thing. YouTube AdSense is when you get above a certain number of subscribers, which is 1,000, um, and you get, I think it's 4,000 hours of viewing, or 4,000 4, views, um, you qualify for what they call like YouTube AdSense. And what that means, if you watch a lot of YouTube, like I do, um, when, you go and, when you go and select a video, and you hit play, and then the video comes up, but before your video plays, an ad will come up, and it'll say, you know, some of them will say, video will play after ad, or skip in five, and then it counts down. Those people, those, those ads, people are paying to put those ads in front of that video, and that means that you can get a share of the revenue that they are bringing in to pay for those ads. Now this is, this is really cool because if you have a good following or you already have a YouTube channel or you have like, like these guitar lessons that we go to, like they get massive subscribers. One that I'm looking at right now, um, he's got 1.07 like million subscribers. So some of these people, they're going to be jumping on his videos and he will have a monetized channel. So people will be putting their ads in front of his and you will be able to get a share in that. Now. It's important to note that AdSense, especially if, like, if you're just gonna be getting started, it's not gonna be something that you can retire off straight away. So it's one of those things where it's for the long long run, um, which is not to discredit it, it's just, it's, it's not gonna make you rich. Um, so the other side of that is, another thing that I teach is actually YouTube ads and it's how to create these ads. Um, and how to select the ads so that you can, or how to select the videos that you put your ad in front of. Um, but we're not gonna go into that right now. Um, another one is wholesaling in the real estate. Uh, I think it's a bit of a foreign term here in Australia. Uh, in the US, a lot of people still do it apparently. And all it basically is, is uh, you, you approach a homeowner, however it is that you do it, send them a letter, um, cold call them, or drop a letter and, I mean, yeah, like drive past his house and throw a message over the fence or something like that. Any way you can get in contact with them. Um, and you basically, if you decide that you want the house and you think that they might be willing to sell or this, you get these cues that tell you that they might want to sell for a low price, you go in and you make an offer and then they accept the offer, you get them under contract, and then from that point, once you got the contract, within the time before settlement, you take the contract and you essentially sell the contract to this to someone else who's willing to pay more than you have offered. And then the difference between what you offer and what you get with your cash buyer, that's your profit. Um, in, in theory, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, and it's something that you can do in your spare time again. Uh, and there's various various ways that you can do it. 
And one of the ways is what they call driving for dollars. And you basically, you just drive around whatever, your own neighborhood, someone else's neighborhood, and you just keep tr trying, to like, tr uh, trying to create a deal flow. And asking all these people. If you ask enough people, eventually someone's gonna wanna sell. Problem is though, if you make the offer, someone accepts it and you're on a contract, um, <laughs> and then you can't find somebody to buy it, then you're gonna put yourself into a bit of a tricky situation. So something that I have looked at doing, but I haven't actually done myself, mainly because of where we are. Um, it's, it, it just, people just don't seem to know about it. But another cool thing is people can do what's called virtual wholesaling, um, which works apparently no matter where in the world you are. So keep that in mind, because if you do have a bit of spare time, then that could be something to look up for as well. And I know a bunch of people that specialize in this kind of thing, so I can help you, I can help put you in touch with these people too. So. Um, the next one is Forex investing. And this one is like, it's, it's something that's, it's been proven to be, you know, uh, so far at least, uh, like recession proof. So it's a mammoth industry. Um, mammoth in the sense that it trades something like five trillion dollars, five days a week, 24 hours a day. Five trillion dollars is traded through the foreign exchange market. Um, if you don't know what Forex is, Forex is short for foreign exchange. Um, it's basically the trading of two currency pairs say for example, the US dollar and the Australian dollar. Um, when they're paired together, one is worth X amount, the other is worth X amount, and then there's a difference in there. So, um, remember the days when you could do international travel? I miss those days. Um, so you hand over a bunch of money, generally being from New Zealand. <laughs> if I went anywhere, I was gonna be getting less money when I handed over my New Zealand money. Um, not everywhere, but you know, generally a, <laughs> a lot of the time, that's how it was. So that always seemed to be how it was whenever I went from whatever country I was in to the country I was visiting. Um, yeah, I seem to have bad luck like that. So um, with that, it's uh, the f forex investing. Again, this is another video that I want to get into a little in a little bit more detail, and I'll also link to that in the description. Um, it's kind of like trading options, etc. in the sense that it's, it, it, it takes a bit more time up front, but it's something that you can learn about. Um, at first, it might seem a little bit daunting, especially if you're like me and you're not super good with maths. Um, <laughs> but in saying that too, like you can learn these, you can, you can learn, you can learn the ropes, anyone can. Um, and it's one of those things where it's not guaranteed that you're going to have a win but the more that you know about it and the more experience that you have in it the more likely you are to succeed in it so um i have some good forex uh in, in investing platforms um so I, I look forward to sharing those with you and um that basically that's 10 um side hustles that you can start right now um so yeah i look my first video uh if you got some value out of that then please hit the like button and um I'm looking forward to sharing more stuff with you in the future. And this, yeah, uh, I hope that I didn't say I'm too much. So yeah, I look forward to seeing you next time. This is Brad, this is The Grind. I'll see you later.